Hi everyone. Sun came out again here in Walla Walla, but it's pretty cold out. So we're still inside the garage. And, uh, you know, from the great comments uh, from the last uh, video on the tree boring head and uh, uh, talking about wall ho hopter uh, also, well, I got a wall hopter out here and I thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about the two. And uh, so, um, uh, I wanted to I wanted to say uh, hi to Will the Blade, sharp guy out there. Okay, and everybody's sharp out there. So uh, let's have some fun with this and kind of look at it. Okay, let me rotate this a little bit and see if I can get you in a reasonable place. Now, what I have in this uh, vertical attachment is a five inch wall hopper. And it's a, it's a Wally of a wall hopter. And it's actually six inches long. But this is a, a UPA 5. Okay. Now it's huge. But it'll actually run in the spindle just fine if you keep the RPM down. You know, kind of like a lathe chuck or, you know, something in a four jaw. And you can balance this, okay? Now, the way it works is this collar. That's what feeds it. And you can set it on the end here. Okay, that's the course adjustment. And sometimes you have to jiggle it to, to knock it loose. And then see, you can set it. And there's nothing else you have to do. You know, there's nothing you have to kick in or anything. But this is a lock here in case you want to bore with it. Okay. Then this is a course adjustment that I moved it with. And it's got a graduation or whatever it is. But this is the fine adjustment here. And each little division is a half a thousandth. And the direction is this way. And the head travels that way. Okay. See, you can turn it out like that. And the head, it, it's not moving very much, but it's moving. All righty. Okay, I'm going to set that down. Now, like I showed you on the tree head, and I'll get that out too. There's the tree head. Now, <clears throat> this one has that collar, right? And this one also has a feed collar. I'll set this back down. Now, to adjust the feed on this, it has 12 pins. Okay? And it's like that feed in antique books on planers and all kinds of things to adjust feed. It's like a finger comes by and knocks a star wheel behind this, and that's what trips it and turns the lead screw for it. Excuse me for a second. Eh? <clears throat> I get a little bit hoarse, okay? So, let's say it's a half thousandth each pin. And, okay, so you push a pin in, and as this goes around, it might show it too. Let's try it. I don't know if you can see uh, if that trips that little bit stiff and it doesn't want to go that way so it's just a little stiff to cancel it you stick uh, oh it's the same thing here same tool you push that over and it pushes the pins back in so you can push uh, that would feed one thousandths thousandths and a half two thousandths but you can spread it around you know uh, around the uh, circumference of that. And to cancel it, you probably see the pins push out. Oh, there we go. See the pins push back out and you can start all over again. Now, this thing's kind of big and tough. And right now it's stiff because I haven't used it for a while and it's cold. So, uh, there's a stop rod. You stick the stop rod in and you bear it against uh, something on the machine. Okay? Okay. But 
when the thing's warmed up, you can actually hold it by hand. As long as you don't have too many pins pulled in, because they kind of da-da-da-da-da. Okay. So that's kind of how that works. Now, I'm trying to think how to explain this. Now, this will cut angles. Now, you can take, um, and let's say uh, you push in enough pins to, uh, to do uh, three thousandths. So this thing will slide this way, three thousandths. Well, you can also um, adjust your table feed or quill feed if it's on, you know, if it has steps. So, so as this feeds out, uh, uh, it advances into the work and you can uh, cut some large bevels and kind of fudge your way around a lot of stuff, you know. Uh, if, which is kind of interesting. You can, uh, I've actually done uh, work on large castings that were CNC done and they forgot to do something on them. <laughs> and it's hard to stick something already made back in a CNC machine, I guess. But there's a lot of things you can do with these. And these two heads, which is kind of cool, was the top of the technology before CNC machines. This stuff was expensive and just top notch. And this um, tree head, um, they, they always go for too much money, uh, generally. <laughs> I, I got this locally from um, a very talented uh, person here that's a, um, a plastic mold maker back in the late 90s, I think, and uh, he got two of these. He got the fine feed and this one, the coarse feed. And uh, he gave me the fine, we kind of made a deal, and he gave me the fine feed, and he found the coarse feed didn't work for him. And I was doing more coarse work than, you know, plastic injection molds, so I, we swapped back, and uh, the coarse feed worked fine for me. Then I learned to feather it, you know. Then I ended up going, using both, I go, well, I like this one better. But the, the fine feed worked great for him. Okay. Let me get that cut down. One more drink of coffee. There we go. Okay. So, you can just do all kinds of things with this. And you can cut uh, internal... Um, grooves, o-ring grooves, snap ring grooves uh, with this also. It, it, uh, this is actually quite a bit more versatile than the tree head, you know, unless you need to cut specific angles, and that's pretty rare, you know. So, but it's a hand, the tree head's a handy uh, item to have. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw it out the door anytime soon or use it as a doorstop. But uh, these, these wall hopters are probably more practical and easier to find. And I've actually seen some of these fairly, uh, fairly cheap. And sometimes the larger ones are less expensive. But this is probably too large, you know, th this is way too large for a bridge port. I can get away and run it in that 4,000 pound um, uh, jig bore pretty good and it'll work on this and it'll be quite happy uh, in the 50 National Bubba spindle. This here is just 40 taper, but I intend to use it in this for very very light stuff and uh, Let's see. I have a couple of tools here. I've made and that's another thing um, this head here this Wally uh, Wally Wally, that's what they're called. I got this at the Boeing Surplus Store, and uh, it was just the head. And I, as I remember, it was under 400 bucks, and they, they were changing tooling back there and methods of manufacture. And uh, as I remember, uh, it was just under 1000 bucks for the kit, you know. But they had this lonely head sitting there, and it's a little bit crusty looking. But uh, I made it look good here by putting a coat of oil on it, okay? <laughs> um, okay, here's a tool. And uh, this thing feeds, it rotates this way, and it feeds out this way. So this tool here, I could put in the heel, 
and uh, cut up to an edge. And one of those edges on old Harley Davidson motorcycle crankcases. So I could face one of those right to that lip. Okay. This tool here would uh, just be for general facing. See, so it go that way. This one uh, uh, does the same thing. See, it, <laughs> I guess you could cut both ways. But this head will face to uh, the center of a 10, uh, 10 inch circle out. But uh, you can face uh, up to, I faced up to 12 inches by using extension tool holders. And I'll show you some of that kind of stuff. Because I think you guys are interested, you know? I think you are. But I want you to know that everything I show you, someone else showed me that is smarter than me. Okay, we'll leave it at that. And I'm glad to pass this stuff on. You guys have a good afternoon.